this leads on to the kind of last question that we're asking all our guests on the show at the moment. You know, AI and automation, we've talked about it a little bit anyway, but do you see them as an opportunity or a threat to HR? Both, to be honest. Um, so it depends on how they're applied. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword, um, so to speak. So used appropriately, um, huge opportunity. Um, if you don't, you, you, can, uh, you, you can do a lot of damage. Um, the analogy I use would be, it's a bit like using a power tool, right? If you know how to use power tools, it greatly amplifies, you know, your ability to get work done quickly. If you're like me and not very good at, you know, using power tools, it also greatly amplifies the impact of your mistake. <laughs> um, and, and, and AI is a bit like that. Um, and sometimes it takes a little bit of, uh, of time before you can actually see it. Um, so, um, huge opportunity, I think, and we all need to lean into this. Um, we just need to be mindful that we uh, we do it in a in, in a safe and secure way. Um, and in particular, sort of bias replication would be a concern uh, when it comes to AI and you know uh, predictive modeling. It doesn't necessarily have to be how it's all done in the past. Maybe the future looks different. So really, sort of setting the right parameters and making sure you get the right the right testing. But that said, I am hugely excited about the upsides that AI can bring. So I, I think it's I think it's worth it um, to push it into it. Um, you just need to be um, to be mindful and, and to be aware of the uh, potential risks as well. And it might be a bit early to say at the moment, but, but do you think the whole COVID-19 situation is going to accelerate the use of AI and automation in, in, in HR? Uh, definitely. So the, there's no, I mean, I don't even, I don't think we're even beginning to comprehend the impact that, that COVID-19 will have, right? Just look at, uh, look, look at the conversations we're having about working working from home, right? Um, we leapfrog 10 years in a few weeks, right? Um, and, you know, the impact on flexibility, the type of talent you can attract, how you can connect. Um, so so I, think it will, I think it will leapfrog that. Um, and then also, you know, COVID really highlighted the need to have data because you need data when you need to make fast decisions uh, and, and you don't have, have all, you know, all the pieces of information that you know, then data sort of helps you steer in the right direction. Um, and I think that will, that will remain even after we return to uh, our new normal. Thomas, thank you very much for being a guest on, on the Digital HR Leaders podcast and joining us from your evening in, in Melbourne. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Um, please, can you let listeners know how they can get in touch with you or, or follow you on social media? Yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn. My name is Thomas Ilgo Rasmussen. I work for National Australia Bank. So you just click the link in there and then we can connect. Thomas, thank you very much. It's a pleasure as always and stay safe and stay well. Likewise. Thanks a lot, David. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe via your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.